Canonical recently has announced that they are making a version of Ubuntu that is a immutable flavor that's going to be relying completely on snap packages. As always, this generated quite some controversy among people who strongly dislike that package manager and those who don't. But the real question is why do so many people hate snaps? There are a variety of reasons, some that are shared with the alternative flat pack, which kind of behave similarly, and some that are not. The idea behind both is to run an application in a fully isolated sandbox with the target application having all the dependencies bundled together. This overall is great for security and it avoids dependency hell. However, this approach does immediately pose a few issues. First, the above mentioned bundle of stuff has to be uncompressed and mounted the first time you run the application after startup. This can be quite slow and a great example of this is when Ubuntu changed the calculator application to a snap package, resulting in some users waiting 10 plus seconds the first time they launched that application. And this decision was reverted in Ubuntu 20.04. More generally, you'll see a lot of users complaining about how slow snap startup times are. In fact, this is something that snap developers are actually working on. Quoting developer Igor, the first run used to take quite a long time. We take this problem seriously and are making changes to solve most of these problems. So hopefully that does ring true. Secondly, the idea of bundling dependencies might result in duplicated packages on a system eating up disk space unnecessarily. There is some data deduplication in place such that different packages can share some of the basis. But if, for example, two applications ask for slightly different versions of GNOME or the GNOME bundle, then it will have to make space for both of those versions of the GNOME bundle on your disk. With a quick search of disk space regarding snaps, you'll find various scripts, some even by Ubuntu developers, to delete all the old versions of snaps in case you end up with multiple copies of the same package. Thirdly, snaps often do not respect the uh, GTK or QT themes of the users, given that all dependencies, including toolkits, are directly bundled with the application. The theme will read from the image itself rather than from the system. Regardless of how you manage to get a theme working, it's generally harder for a containerized application to interact with the system, even to, for example, in KDE Plasma, to ship a widget that you can add to your desktop. All of these are quite technical issues that follow directly from what snaps and flat packs actually are, and then we have some uh, political ones are rather direct decisions instead of those technical limitations. The most known one is snaps aren't necessarily fully open source. The code that actually runs the server that delivers snap packages is in fact proprietary, even though the client itself is open source. And this is quite an issue for a company like Canonical, which relies on supporting free and open source software, and many users are not happy about it. The reasoning that Canonical wants to be the only company providing snap packages and wants to avoid a scenario similar to PPAs, where a user can add a third-party server and download software from there. This is understandable. Adding third-party PPAs often results in issues, outdated software, and security concerns, but it is easy to argue that this is directly against the free software philosophy. As a direct comparison, Flatpak has taken the exact opposite route. Not only is the technology open source, but it's designed around the idea of supporting multiple servers to fetch packages from. And the most notable one and the most used one is Flathub, but this is technically just one of the many available servers. And this has a direct effect, being that Conical wants to be the only company controlling snap packages. Ubuntu is really the only distribution kind of adopting and using them, even though snaps are technically universal, as in they can be used in any distro. I even jokingly used uh, the Discord snap package in uh, Arch Linux for a while. On the other hand, there are many distributions that have no issues in using flat packages at all, as they just generally seem to be less controversial. As an example, when snaps were first announced, Ubuntu claimed that they were collaborating with other distributions like Fedora and OpenSUSE to bring them there. However, those distros immediately denied or downplayed the existence of this collaboration and have avoided Snap Package since. Finally, Canonical has been forcing its users to use Snap Package, which given above, isn't super appreciated. If you try to install Chromium through APT as an example, it will actually install the Snap version of that package, even though it's not what you asked for. If you wanted to install Snap Packages, you would have done Snap install whatever. When you use apt install whatever you are expecting to get it from 
a repository using apt. This isn't well received by other distros, especially the Ubuntu based ones. Uh, for example, Linux Mint decided to completely forbid apt from installing snap packages entirely. So as always, we have kind of a mixture here of technical complexity. It's being worked on by the developers and some disagreement in design decisions. However, for snaps, the technological issues and the more political ones are so big that they've alienated a big portion of the Linux user base.